come from the waste group. And we thought that since the government and the mayor of London are promoting low carbon domestic energy, and also that gas prices are increasing, um, it might be very useful for NCAF members to hear from an expert working in the renewable domestic energy industry about the practicalities of replacing a gas boiler with a heat pump. So I contacted the Heat Pump Association, which is an industry body, and they put me on to Mitsubishi Electric, and they have kindly provided us with uh, Daniel to be our speaker this evening. Um, Daniel is a sales manager with an engineering background, and he works with heat pump installers in London. Okay, over to you, Daniel. So um, an introduction to air source heat pump. Um, as Cathy said, I'm lucky enough to be a sales manager with Mitsubishi Electric um, and I get to look after installers who fit our equipment all day, every day. Um, I've tried to come away from the salesy aspect of specifically Mitsubishi and give you a broader over piece of what a heat pump is, how it functions, features, benefits and concerns and why the government is so interested um, in this new technology now. Um, so I'll move on to the first slide. So what is an air source heat pump? In short, an air source heat pump is very similar to a technology you already have in your home, which is a fridge. It takes warm ambient air and turns that into cool air inside the fridge. The heat pump is just doing exactly the same, but in reverse. So it's taking the cooler air from outside, it's upgrading that energy through use of electric, and it's turning it into hot water, which is pushed into the property. So to give you some figures there, for one kilowatt of electric that we put in, we take two kilowatts from the air of heat energy and give out three kilowatts of usable heat. This means your heat pump is at least 300% efficient. Now that slide is slightly outdated. This last year with our new product we've released into the market, we're actually seeing more 350, 400% efficient systems. So how do you control an air source heat pump? So most heating thermostats that you already have, you're already very used to, used to can be used with an air source heat pump, likewise as can on the floor. Um, so it doesn't matter if you have radiators or on the floor, both technologies can be used and they do work very well with air source. To adjust it is simply turning it up and down um, to a temperature that you're happy with. So part of the system design is to uh, ascertain what temperature you are happy and comfortable with. That is how the system will be installed and then you can control it as you feel necessary. In terms of hot water, we actually suggest this be set up in what we call automatically. So what I mean by that is typically with a gas or oil boiler, you will have it on for a timer in the morning or a timer in the evening, unless you have a combi boiler, in which case obviously it's instantaneous. With an air source heat pump, we like the cylinder to be set at a certain temperature, say 50 degrees, on a five degree setback. So once that temperature starts to come down to 45 degrees, the heat pump will automatically come on and top it up. It's only got a very small amount of work to actually do. And it also means that you've always got plenty of hot water. So an air source heat pump wants to do a little bit of work, but quite often that's how they run efficiently. Whereas your traditional gas or oil boilers are quite happy to reheat it from stone cold. It's very, very energy intensive to do that. So what is involved in what is involved in installing an air source heat pump. So I just need to move people out of the way so I can read. So the process of having an air source heat pump installed is actually very simple, um, but there are a few key things you need to make sure that you're aware of um, before you sort of dive into it. You know, it's a big financial commitment. Um, it's something you need to make sure that you get right the first time around. There's no real do-overs with it. So the first part is a survey. One of our trusted, accredited and trained installers can come around do a free of charge survey to look at the property and ascertain whether it is suitable or not. So one of the tips I've given here is to look at getting an EPC, which is an energy performance certificate. You may have seen it. They look very similar to what you get on a new electrical appliance, like a fridge or a telly. It's the green all the way down to orange bars, and they will rate A to F. They will do one of those for your property. That's very inexpensive. It's only £40 to have one of those done. And it will actually tell you from an independent assessor what insulation levels are in the property. So the reason I mention this is air source is very closely assumed, uh, associated with new build, high insulated properties, which naturally it performs very well in. That isn't always the case. It doesn't have to be in a super well insulated property. Um, well, a lot of what people do 
for example, is their loft insulation. They may only have a very limited amount of loft insulation. Loft insulation is very, very cheap um, but can make a huge impact on the heat being lost from the property. This is something an installer would go through with you um, to see if it's something worthwhile doing at the same time as your air to heat pump install. The second most important thing would be to find a competent installer. So any plumbing and heating engineer could well have a go at installing an air source heat pump. And they could probably do a good job of installing the air source heat pump. What they don't have is the knowledge of how to design the system properly for your house. So for many years, uh, fitting a gas boiler into a property is very rule of thumb. Um, plumbers will know off the top of their head what size radiator, what size boiler to go in a property. Now with gas, it's always going to be oversized. The main difference is because gas historically was so cheap and the price of the models between the, the, the boilers was not very much, it was easier just to put the biggest size in and that would satisfy everyone. That won't be the case of air source heat pump. So as you go from one unit to another, the price does start to increase as does the installation cost. It also is, needs to give real consideration to the size of the radiators that are already in the property. The chances are, if you have a one meter wide window, you may well have a one meter wide radiator underneath it already. That's because it looks aesthetically pleasing. It actually probably means the radiator you need for that room is already twice the size of what it needs to be. So these stories where people say, oh, your radiators need to be double the size they are for an air source heat pump. There is some truth to that. They do need to be slightly larger. But what you already have in your property, I would challenge and say that's already too big to start with. So why air source heat pump and why now? So you may well have heard of the uh, government's target to reach net zero by 2050. The way that the government proposed to do this is through electrification of our grid. So as you've seen the uptake with solar PV some years ago, obviously EV, electric cars, they are going to have to upgrade our electric grid. There's no two ways about that to achieve net zero. Part of that plan will be air source heat pumps. So our, our um, electrical grid as it stands is not big enough that the infrastructure isn't there to support everyone having an electric car or an air source heat pump. It needs reinforcement, which the government has taken on to do. As I said, air source heat pump is a part of that. So the UK is the largest producer of renewable energy in Europe. So when you take an electric heat pump and power that from renewably sourced electricity, the emissions factor on the grid is ever decreasing. The more and more we produce in renewables, the less of an impact the air source heat pump has on the environment. Gas will always stay the same. The way in which you mine gas, and you, you get it and you transport it, and then you actually pump it around the gas network, that will always stay the same. And the emissions it gives when you burn in your boiler will not change. So we're at a point now where previously coal-fired power stations would be supplying electric. The, the emissions that an air source heat pump has on the grid, therefore, was quite high. As we are reducing and coming away from coal and moving towards nuclear and electric, that is now at the point we have underpassed gas and our emissions for the grid. So it's quite a sort of bigger landmark in the timeline of um, emissions for the UK. So the benefits um, in terms of energy bills in comparison. So I'll start off with, I'm just conscious of time, so apologies if I'm rushing, um, the boiler upgrade scheme. So pre previously, the government had an incentive called the RHI, which is a renewable heat incentive. That was a payback over seven years, which was paid quarterly to the homeowner which was a great scheme, um, but the issue with that was it relied on people having the capital front funds up front to be able to you know, fund an air source heat pump. So they've listened to a lot of what the lobbyists have said in the Heat Pump Association, et cetera, and said, now we will actually give you 5,000 pounds up front as a grant. This will open it up to people who don't have that capital up front, um, and they can get an instant 5,000 pounds voucher off of a new system. As well as that, you've also got the running cost. So we all know that gas and electric prices are set to absolutely soar. Um, the electric prices I've given, I, I understand this presentation will be made available to yourselves afterwards. I have um, put my sources of those electric and gas prices in. They was accurate as of last Friday when I put this together. I do appreciate that they will be going up. So this might be slightly skewed. So the cost of energy for electric, I've used 20.58p. And for a gas boiler, I've used 7.52p. Now, when you look at the efficiency of an air source heat pump and the efficiency of a gas boiler, the actual cost per kilowatt of heat to your house 
is actually a lot less on an air source than what it is on a gas. And I've been conservative with the air source heat pump's efficiency there. When we first started, I said a minimum of 300. Like I said as well, we're actually looking at more 350, 400% efficient now. So I've kept it low ball in order to keep the figures fair. Um, and I think 95% for a gas boiler is true for a brand new high efficiency boiler, not so much your older stock. Um, one thing to look at here uh, as the biggest comparison is storage heaters. So they are 100% efficient. Whatever you put in, you will get out, which means it costs you whatever your price of electric is to heat your property. So we understand that air source heat pumps aren't for every property. There is going to be properties out there that simply don't have the insulation levels required for an air source heat pump. It's not to say you can't put one on. The capital cost of installing an air source heat pump on a very large, leaky, uninsulated property, the payback period on that type of installation simply isn't feasible. Um, however, I, what I'd like to understand, and moving on to your Q&A, uh, which I think I finished just on time in the 10 minutes there, um, is what are your concerns? What are your questions? Um, that hopefully I can try to answer tonight and go through. This presentation, although you can't see um, in the notes, there is a lot of links and um, references to documents. A lot of it is independent uh, from the Heat Pump Association, the government website and the Climate Change Committee. Um, there is also some links to our particular products. And there is a link in here to where you can find our trusted and accredited installers just simply by putting a postcode in, you can access that information. That website will also take you to anything else. Mm -hmm.